Uh, once again, uh, prior to this episode, we do want to give a special shout out to all the hashtag heroes, everyone who's contributing, the channel members. Uh, 50% of all the proceeds that you guys have for your membership will be going to the Punt Foundation, uh, as we've said on multiple episodes before. So we can't thank you enough. The Punt Foundation can't thank you enough. Your support is is greatly appreciated, and we wouldn't be able to do this uh, without you guys. So we're very, we're very pleased that you are one of the heroes. And if you want to be one of the heroes, right below this video, next to the subscribe button, which you already should have hit, will be the uh, will be the join button. If you want to join the membership, there's five different levels you could pick. You get things ranging from early release of episodes, behind the scenes footage, breakdown and a uh, Hall of Famers. If you want to be a Hall of Famer, you get a special uh, one-on-two call. Like, what is it? What are we call? Uh, we call the Hall of Famers, and when we're done filming, uh, on the days that we film, and we just have a discussion about the bill. So it's actually a lot of fun. I had to pr I had to start this episode with that because I'm about to get some hate mail. That's fine. And that's, I mean, I could be the Tony Kornheiser to your Michael Wilbon any day. I like Kornheiser better, though. Okay. All right. He's usually the one pushing buttons, though. I know. And I'm going to push a lot of buttons today. I just want to preface I, this. Yeah. When Paul and I were discussing this 15 seconds ago to do this episode, <laughs> uh, I just, I'm going to be the antagonist and probably uh, make some enemies. And I understand that. But what I'm going to do is this here's the episode. I'm going to be an anti-Buffalo Bills fan or individual that cheers for another team in the NFL. Paul has to sell me on the 2020 Bills being good. And if you guys know about the Scarlet Witch abilities of this man. So there might be some familiar quotes that you guys hear throughout this episode from anti-Bills individuals. But we're going to see where this, uh, this road will take us. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mario, I have to ask you a question. Talk to me. This is a serious question. Uh, it's the only ones you ask me. <laughs> Why do hot dogs come in packages of 10, but hot dog buns come in packages of 8? Yeah, I've always wondered that. <clears throat> I don't know. Do you have an answer for it? Oh, God, no. I'm just curious. <laughs> do you know that you have never been in an empty room? <laughs> I'll I'm start. I'm excited to see how this is going to go. I'll start. And just, okay. to, just to give everyone the disclaimer that just skipped to this part of the video. Uh, I have to be an anti-Bills individual. Yeah. And Paul's got to sell me on the 2020 Bills being good. And we've all heard these things before. Okay. <clears throat> Dude, you guys, you guys choked in the playoffs last year against Houston. The Bills suck. They're not going to be any good in 2020. Allen's garbage. Let me let me ask you. Do you you like football, right? I do. Okay, so you watch football every week, right? I, I watch it all the time. Awesome, awesome. Just so, watch my own uh -huh. team, though. I don't really I, watch the Bills. Oh, you, oh, okay, okay. Oh, but okay. I know they suck. Okay, so you like watch ESPN to get like all the around league stuff? Yeah, I yeah, got direct. Right. My buddy has direct ticket. I go over to his house. Okay, that's fun. All right. Uh, so I take it you watch football because you want to see a team win the Super Bowl, right? Well, that and my fantasy football team is awesome. Like, okay. I, they have a really good fantasy football team. Wait, you have a fantasy football team you don't like Josh Allen? <laughs> he sucks. So, dude can't throw it anywhere. You realize he's going to be like a top five fantasy quarterback this season, right? Like, it's going to happen. Dude, I'm in a keeper league. I got my homes. I don't even care. Okay. Fair. That's a fair argument. Fair argument. Um, that's fine. Well, if you like winning Super Bowls, you should watch the Buffalo Bills this season. It's, and, and They're going to win it? They lost four in a row, dude. Like, how are they going to win a Super Bowl? Okay, how old were you when that happened? Listen, it's been miserable. I'm not saying Irrelevant. That. Yeah, irrelevant. <laughs> I, listen, I know it's been a rough ride, but you have a nearly entire returning offense, a nearly entire returning defense. That did what? What What did the offense do in 2019? Uh, besides make it to the playoffs, they did enough. The team made it to the playoffs on the yeah. defense. That's fine. Yeah, talk to me about the 2000 Baltimore Ravens. Like, did they make it to the playoffs solely on How their defense? How long ago was that? <laughs> hey, well, let me talk to you about the 2006 Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. This is quickly disintegrating. Man, I can't believe you used my own argument against me. Oh, it's about time. It's only been 400 episodes. You've been using mine. <laughs> Yeah, but I think that's – here's the deal, right? You can look at this as offenses are 
the crux of every NFL team, or you can look at it saying defense is the crux of any, every NFL team. And there's the old adage, defense wins championships, you know, but it is a very offense-based league. So I understand why you think the Bills' offense isn't going to be that great, but the truth is they scored enough points to win enough games last year. And with the way the AFC is made, East is made up, you you really think another team is going to be Buffalo? Well, the AFC only East. reason you guys would even have a shot is because Brady left. Okay, that's the only reason you guys would even have a shot. Sure. Okay. He's, it was not even ranked the top quarterback in his own division. He's like ranked third. Like I read that from ESPN. Yeah, I read that from yeah. ESPN. Okay. So let me let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Would you want a rookie quarterback taking over your team right now? Dude, Joe Burrow's going to be so good. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, I, I can't it. do it. I'm going to burst into flames. In my I can't time. do it. I've always wondered what a body uh, sounds like when it hits the pavement at 55 <laughs> miles an hour. Jesus. I'll slow down to 30. <laughs> Tuck and roll, Grandma. <laughs> Tuck and roll. Push you out of the car. Just yell, Sammy Watkins. <laughs> For Sammy! <laughs> Do we have an episode in here somewhere? <laughs> let, me, let me get back. Let me get back <laughs> to the point. With, and I, I know the wide receiver group doesn't sound all that sexy, right? Because you Cole Beasley, who's like a number three. Five right? one. Yeah, exactly. Little, right? And he had a career year last year in Buffalo, but okay, that's not important. That's fine. Uh, John Brown had a career year wait, again, wait, wait. right? Hold so on. Hold on. John Brown, who was typically a number two and hit in an Arizona offense, then went to Baltimore, and then had a career year for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. Was, was for a while, one of the top yardage-wise receivers in the AFC. Yep. And Cole Beasley, who... Had a better year with Josh Allen than Dak Prescott? Yep. Okay, well, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to get on this train. 100%. Keep talking. So now you're going to add Stephon Diggs into the mix, right? And the one thing Buffalo really missed was the ability to stretch the ball deep down the field. And not to say that Diggs is a deep threat, but what it does do is it makes the offense a little bit less predictable. Last year, one of the reasons I saw the offense struggle a little bit was when the Bills planned on pushing the ball downfield, it was really obvious. Like, just their personnel packages. You would look at it and go, oh, they're, going to, they're about to throw the ball down. Well, I mean, who's their offensive coordinator? It doesn't matter. Chester. Chester the Cheeto cat. Who cares? <laughs> who's the offensive coordinator? You can't drag me into that trap. <laughs> <laughs> Try luring you in and then we're... Yeah, no. This isn't Hansel and Gretel. You can't... <laughs> You can't sucker me into the oven with kid and treats, okay? <laughs> Not gonna happen. And uh, if you look at first half versus second half, Devin Singletary was one of the best running backs in the second half of the season last year. So Didn't they the drafted replacement. They sure did. And in the second half of the season, you'll probably see him perform, <laughs> right? It's just, but there's too much to like about Buffalo. That I mean, I, we're harping about we're harping about the offense, right? But the offense is improved, but the defense is all returning. And when you have no offseason, right, having a full team come back is super critical. No change in coordinators. The whole coaching staff is back, right? That's, Not, that's no rare. position changes, right? Your that's quarterback rare. coach, the same. Your offensive line coach, the same. Your defense coordinator, the same. Your offense coordinator, the same. Like, it's, we're now entering multiple years the same coordinators. I just I hear oh, I so many things. Uh, not being a Bills fan, yeah. I hear so many things. <laughs> I hear so many things. Not being a Bills fan, that it's just like Carolina North. Like it's just the Carolina Panthers up north. Why didn't they sign Newton? Why sign Newton when you have Josh Allen? I mean, they're effectively the same. Player. One guy's an MVP. One guy's not. Well, one guy's got to be an MVP. One guy's unemployed, ranked tenth, and Chris Sims. Is like, <laughs> Well, according to Chris Sims, Cam Newton is you know, eight spots better than Josh Allen. You're not doing a very good job. No. <laughs> then we can't sell the Bills. It's, Why can anyone else? It's it's hard to argue against ignorance. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's, okay. it's hard. I'm taking the mask of this episode off right now. Yeah, it's it hard. Is, it's hard to sell sell against ignorance. It really is. It was, people yeah. aren't just gonna hate Buffalo because they've hated Buffalo for so long. And it's just, you just have to win. You go out there and you win, and that's all that it takes. And you know what's the great thing about winning, Mar? What's up? You, you, just, you do this. Ready? Told you relax. You. Yeah. I told you. It's so no weird. Blow because- in the playoffs. <laughs> See, I told you. I told you. It's weird because if we think about this, okay, the, the acting of the episode is over. Just like you guys know. Here's the thing. People hate on Buffalo. People hate on the Patriots for completely opposite reasons. Yeah. You right. had, oh, you haven't won anything. Right. And the Patriots have won everything, and they still hate on them because they have won. There's right. a reason to hate the Patriots. Right. If you're a team that's – if you're not a fan of the Patriots. Right. If you're not a fan of the Bills, is it jealousy well, that you see what's happening from the outside on this team? Right. If, if, you, if you don't, then you're right. You're just ignorant. Well, so let's rephrase this a little bit because I, okay. I, I hear where you're going, right? So if you are if you like baseball, right, you either love the Yankees or hate the Yankees. There the same go. reasons that you love and hate the Patriots. You love the Patriots or you just hate the Patriots. So there's a lot of teams. If you ask me about the San Diego Padres, I'm indifferent to them. And indifference is dangerous, right? Yes. I just – I don't ever expect them to be good because I'm indifferent. To, I don't care about their progress. What they do, in my mind, it's ingrained in me that I just don't think it's going to work. It doesn't matter what it is. I think mm. a lot of people in Buffalo uh, who people are outside of the Buffalo circle just think no matter what Buffalo does, it's, it's just at some layer, it's just not going to work, right? Well, yeah. That's... And, and maybe we deal with the same fears as Bill's fans every now and again. Well, I – Yes. I will agree 100% with that. But going back to your San Diego point, if you like this, if you're not so much, it's not that you don't care or you're indifferent to the San Diego Padres. It's a what if a Padres fan, because Mafia and the nation, we're very, all right, it's our time. Right. We're going to start talking. Right. We're going to be good this year. The team's going to be good. I'm not, I want to say we're, because a lot of people get upset with that. I'm not sure. a part of the organization, you're not, whatever. The Buffalo Bills are going to be good this year. And it's in your face. Now, you can either choose to accept that or you can choose to ignore it. But it's going to be there. It's not like you're an idle fan sitting back going, gee, I hope, I hope the Bills are going to be good. They're going to be good. Yeah. Is the league, the nation, the mafia ready for that? Uh, people who are outside of you know the mafia and the nation, they're not ready for it. And they might be a little scared about what's coming out on the horizon because they see if if Thanksgiving didn't wake wake everybody up last year, that was if a big the game. if the Steelers game didn't wake everybody up last year, if how they played against the Patriots as tough as they did didn't wake everybody up. I know the Patriots had a down year at the end of the year, but that being said, they were climbing rungs all the time. How tough they played against Baltimore, you know what I mean? So. It's it's something where it, I think it's it's coming up over the horizon and people really aren't ready for it. Well, and, and if people say, well, the only reason the Bills are going to win the division is because Tom Brady's gone, that's fine. You can let them let them live that life, right? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, you you go ahead and live that life. But I'll tell you what, come week eight, when you're looking at the Bills' record, going, oh, wait a minute. And the and the beginning of the season is a tough part of the season. Yes, that's you know you get past week eight, you start looking at the rest of the schedule, you're, you're like, okay. Buffalo could really string some stuff together here yeah. and really pull away from a lot of other teams. Yeah, you know, it's if somebody's willing to say the Bills are going to win under nine games, you bet that person. All day. You, you bet them. And their schedule's tougher this year than it was last year. This and is, I still think they are a far, far better team now than they were last year. And I want to just preface this for everybody in the nation, everybody at Bills Mafia that may have come across this episode. This is not us being homers. This is clearly not us being homers. Yeah. This is being objective about who you have returning, what you're playing this year, how much everyone's together, what's going to go on with the offense, what's going to go on with the defense. They're all going to step up. Barring injury, barring injury, this team is going to make a run. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm all here for it.